What is up, MMA fans? This is TudorLeonteForSherdo.com, and today it's my honor to talk with USC flyaway fighter, Mr. Brandon Royval. Hello, Brandon. How are you today? Good, and yourself? I'm fine as well. Thank you very much for asking. Um, so, listen, in general, I noticed that you mentioned pre-fight pre rituals on your Instagram stories recently. What do you like to do before a fight? Um, like the day of the fight, I like to watch a, I like to watch a couple movies. Uh, my favorite movie to watch is The Warriors and then The Chinese Connection. But like okay. a week out from the fight, like uh, I always make sure I watch my dad play. Uh, my dad's a hockey player. Oh, and, uh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I always like to watch him play. Uh, so that's one of my pre-fight rituals. And then uh, I have two friends that are in a band and they usually perform like, Right, like it's, it usually matches up right around this time. So I always try to go see them the week of the fight too, because they always support me. And uh, yeah, they're probably like my biggest fan. So, did you manage to get your father into a fight with someone? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's he. It's like a non-contact league, but I I like to joke around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, I was joking too since I read the that one on on your stories, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, listen, you are scheduled to face Matt Schnell at UFC 274 on May the 7th. Uh, how was your camp in preparation for this fight? It's been cool, man. Uh, it's been a fun camp. I think Matt Schnell has been uh, a little bit one of those part, like uh, one of those guys that have a couple of guys in the gym that fight just like him. So it's been a, it's been ideal, you know. Matt Schnell's a, he's he's really technical and has like a, a pretty standard like technical type of a uh, type of style that I can uh, get people in there to emulate really well. Uh, may I ask you who were the fighters who, with whom you actually trained? Uh, you yeah, know, yeah. to imitate uh, his, your opponent's fighting style. Yeah, like for, first and foremost, it's uh, uh, Clay Clay Mata. He's a uh, he's an upcoming fighter, and he's been nothing but a blessing these last few years, man. He's been emulating all the fights. He's probably my main training partner. He is my main training partner, but uh, he. Uh, he was being a great match now and just giving me great looks and then just coming in and helping me game plan. So Clay Matza, uh, I have a guy named uh, upcoming flyweight uh, Oscar Herrera that kind of does like the same stuff as match. Now he like flip his hair mid round and stuff too. It's funny, <laughs> but, uh, um, and that's just him anyways. He'll do that anyways, but you know, match now does stuff like that and uh, fights real pretty like that. And uh, Yusuf Zalal has been always a, a good blessing for this camp. Uh, are you still training at factory X, right? Yeah, yeah, Factory X till uh, till I'm done fighting for sure. That's my gym for life. Uh, who is going to be in your corner? Um, we're gonna have Yusef Zalal. Uh, Cl our, um, I'm gonna have Coach Mark Montoya, and then I'm gonna have uh, one of our wrestling coaches, Jordan Tutoni. Uh, okay, I, I understand. Uh, mm -hmm. And what about the fight itself? How do you see it going down? Me. Um, for me, my game plan is just to go out there and live a dream, man. Uh, I get a fight in front of a crowd. I get a fight in front of an audience, and that's the first time for me. So it's just – for me, it's just go out there and just enjoy the moment, uh, create some chaos, and then embrace the chaos, man. And uh, hopefully I can walk out with uh, two paychecks and uh, hopefully three paychecks or four paychecks and a fan bonus. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of good people on the card, but uh, walk out with a bunch of fans and stuff too. Uh, I haven't been able to fight in front of a crowd in, like, two and a half years or three years almost so it's this would be my first chance and uh man I, I don't know i just want to embrace it all and just have fun and enjoy a little bit of chaos out there you know i create chaos i was actually caught by surprise you know when you said that you haven't fought in front of a live audience of course you meant in the ufc and that you're right i mean it's been a while you made your ufc debut in uh, may 2020 the coronavirus uh, was unfortunately already here. Uh, yeah, I believe it's since uh, November 2019. You, yeah, it's, you... been, it's been a long time, man. I, I, the last time, the last time I uh, I fought in front of a crowd, I man, I main evented it in Denver, Colorado, and I sold so many tickets. And it was like one of the cool. It had to be the coolest moment of my life. Is uh, I went out there and uh, the, the main event, and I just got a bunch of cheers. Uh, tore tore uh, uh, um, tore this dude up real quick and then uh, made the crowd go wild. And it's just like, I, I miss it, man. I miss it. I miss, uh, I'm, I'm a, I think I'm a fan friendly fighter and I try to go out there and, uh, and put on a show, man. So it's like, this is a good time and a good opportunity for me to go put on a show against a really skilled opponent. So do you expect audience to be a factor in your fight, right? 
Uh, I hope they are, man. I hope it is. I know, I know if I hear some cheering, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to do some stupid stuff. And uh, <laughs> so I kind of like to fight anyways, you know, I like to fight a little chaotic and especially get against a guy like Matt Schnell is uh, he's a really pretty fighter and he's patient, takes his time and stuff. And it's just like, you know, I, I can do that too. I can be patient. I can fight a little pretty, but it's like, I really don't want to. I just kind of want to go out there and just make it a dog fight, you know, and uh, rough him up and then just hopefully end up with a couple bonuses by the end of the night, you know? I wasn't expecting anything less, less from someone <laughs> nicknamed Raw Dog. And of course, I, I saw you fighting a few times, so I know what to expect from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly, man. And it's just like, it's a good opportunity. There's gonna be a lot of eyes on this card. Uh, this is probably gonna be like either the, the one of the more viewed cards that I've been on. So it's just a good opportunity for me to go out there and just cement myself in the in one of the top five and just let them know I'm a top five fighter and uh, get myself uh, uh, maybe like a title contention fight off this. It's also just a good chance for me to gain some fans and some notoriety and let them know that the flyweights are here. And uh, this, this isn't the old flyweight division, man. This is an exciting division. And uh, I, I want to show that. Yeah, actually, you know, I was thinking about it a few days ago. The flyweight division was on the verge of being closed you know, it shut down in the UFC a few years ago, a few months ago. But now it seems that, uh, you know, flyweights are, are really thriving. Uh, do you agree yeah. uh, on that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's like, in my opinion, I think I'm the most exciting flyweight in the division. And I, I want to push that and uh, I want to embrace that. And I want to I want to keep that flyweight division alive, man. I don't want them to ever think that they could cut the flyweight division again. And uh I'm going to go out there and put a, put a stamp on uh, Matt Snell and then just put a note on the whole entire card and just, you know, steal the show. Uh, you will have your chance to, to steal it for, for real. Um, right now you're coming off a split mm -hmm. decision victory over uh, Rogerio Bontorin. Uh, do you think that that fight was, you know, so close as, as, as it appears? At least yeah, on, yeah. On the it, was, it was way too close for comfort I, I don't ever like going to the judges anyway I think I've only went into one fight with that went to the judges and won before that so I hate going to the judges more than anything but uh yeah that fight was way too close for comfort man I don't like it I like to get them in and out man I like to get in and out of there I like to beat someone's ass and then just go home you know what I'm saying so uh the fact that me and Bontrain's fight were so close that uh one it, it just like it, it uh it put a urge, it put like a, a urge onto this fight. And then also it was just like, I wanted to get that sour taste out of my mouth so bad and get a quick turnaround. Um, so once Matt Schnell and Alex Perez dropped out, I, I asked for just a quick turnaround against uh, specifically Matt Schnell because Alex Perez is a, a friend of mine. But uh, yeah, it's a quick turnaround. I was hoping I could fight him within the month or two months and just keep the ball rolling and uh, gain some momentum again. But uh, it ended up being a little bit later, but I'm excited about it. It gave me a chance to prepare and, uh, and get ready for a, a really good fighter as a match now. Um, do you believe that against uh, Bontorin, uh, um, something went wrong? Or, you know, yeah, you... well, to me, I think it's just his style, and it's 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 his style and my style. My style is a little bit of chaotic, and I think I wanted to tone it down that fight, and maybe that wasn't the fight to tone it down, and maybe I should have just went in and uh, just threw a bunch of punches at him and, uh, kind of picked up the quantity. But for me, it was, it was one of those fights that I, I wanted to go in there and just slow things down a little bit and, uh, pop shot him. And I think Bontrain's pretty patient. And I think, you know, his, his style was to just slow me down too. And, uh, I, I just think that that's why it kind of led to a little bit of a boring fight is, is I wanted to, I wanted to slow myself down. And I think his whole entire game plan was to hold me down and just slow me down and just win these little positions, you know, um, where where that uh where that kind of like led to like way too close of a fight where it's like if I kind of went in there and just went myself and just threw 50 punches right off the bat um created some chaos it would have created desperation out of him and maybe led to an opening that would have been a a, a decisive finish because I mean I still think he kind of tapped on that arm bar but it would have been more of a decisive finish you know what I'm saying yeah, I agree. I understand. Um, on that night, you also snapped a uh, two bout skid after losing to uh, Alexandra Pantoja and uh, Brendo Moreno. Um, is there anything you regret from those fights? Yeah, I mean, I regret uh, maybe uh, maybe I rushed those two fights all together. Is I mean, Moreno. I mean, I I broke my like I was going in really compromised. I, 
my shoulder was barely hanging on by a limb. And you could see that when I was on top of him, I was like doing like a couple of hammer fists when my, my shoulder dislocated. But uh, with, with Alexander Pantoja is just one, I, I, you know, he's a good fighter, man. Pantoja is good. He's dangerous. And uh, I kind of threw myself in the fire with him. And that's why I wanted to sell myself against Bontarine. And maybe, maybe I sold myself against a guy like Pantoja, not someone that's Bontarine that's just going to wait around all day, you know, but uh I, I don't know. I, I, as far as the the Moreno thing goes, it's like I kind of just think it's a scratch. He just got lucky that my arm broke that round. But uh, Pantoja is just, you know, fight a little smarter um, against someone that's also chaotic, you know, is, is I have the ability to just slow things down and make things uh, less chaotic than I do. I like to fight like that. And that's my preference of fighting style. But it's like I don't need to match his his chaos with chaos is I could have slowed it down and uh, picked him apart a little bit better and been a little bit smarter on that fight. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's mainly what it was. Listen, I read that you worked in the juvenile justice system until 2020. May, may I ask, uh, what did you do? Yeah, yeah, I, I just, uh, it's called the uh, youth service specialist is what it was called, but it's virtually like a corrections office for, uh, for youth. Um, it's a little different though. It's cause like, they're not like behind, like I'm not behind glass or anything. So it's like, let's say, let's say I'm on a couch. I'd be sitting on a couch. Here's a youth. Here's a youth. Here's a youth. Like we, we all just hang out together all day. So just making sure that they're not doing anything too crazy and, uh, just keeping things cool and, uh, monitored in there, man. It was, it was definitely one of the coolest jobs I've ever had. And, uh, like I said, I, I formed a lot of good relationships, not only with the staff, but with those kids, man, uh, I formed a lot of good relationships with those kids. And then those staff, man, some of the staff that are in there and sticking it out there is that's a hard job, man. It's a hard job. You deal with a lot of stuff. I feel like I got a lot of respect because I was an MMA fighter and, uh, you know, I was an MMA fighter and I, I kind of matched a lot of the, uh, a lot of what those kids had is like a lot of those kids are minorities. I'm a minority. I'm a Mexican kid. And, uh, I think, uh, I think I got a lot of respect and, you know, I, I know how to shoot the shit and talk to people and all that, but like some of those staff, some of those staff went in there and like were immediately hated and, uh, they had to push through and earn their respect and all that stuff where as in, I came in and I kind of know how to talk to people and, you know, I'm an MMA fighter. So I, I think all those kids thought that was super cool. And, uh, it, it was one of those situations where like, I didn't necessarily have to work as hard as some of those other guys to gain my respect, but, um, uh, yeah, it was a close job, man. It was really impactful. Um, it, there's a lot of life lessons, a lot of things you take home with you. Cause, uh, it was a really cool job, but it was a hard job, man. Uh, some of those kids weren't dealt a fair card in life. And, uh, you know, honestly, all those kids weren't dealt a fair card in life. I mean, a couple of made, made bad decisions against, uh, everything they were taught, but most of them were just put in a, a horrible position that I know if I was in their shoes, I probably would have made all the same mistakes, you know, and, uh, gave into what they gave into. And it was just, it, it, it was sad to see and it, it was sad to see but it's also cool to see some of them one realize their potential and uh i've seen some of those kids uh go on to become dads and do some great things so far and then uh, there's been a handful of kids that uh have passed away since i've been there and just in gang violence shootings robberies uh overdoses whatever it is you know but they're young kids and you know like uh, as an adult or as someone that has uh had a little bit more life, uh, had a, a lot more life experience than some of these kids. It's like, I see potential in those kids. You know, I seen so much potential in there and I seen so much, so much things that like, that they, they couldn't see for themselves, you know? And it's like, they, maybe they haven't ever seen it throughout their life or whatever, but it's just one of those things that it's like, uh, I, I don't know. It's a little heartbreaking to see, you know, kids that are born into gang life, kids that are born in the wrong neighborhood or kids that were put in a shitty position and made a shitty mistake on top of it, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. There's a lot to take away from that job. And uh, there's a lot to take away from those kids. And uh, honestly, it's just like, we really need to, in, at least in Denver, Colorado, just, we just need to invest in our youth, man, because uh, they are the future. I'm like, those poor neighborhoods and like the rougher neighborhoods, man, there's so much untapped potential that, that like, who knows, man, who knows what some of these kids could have done with a, with a better card down. And, and, you know, some are still doing great things despite that. But uh, that being said is, you know, there, there's, a, there's a I don't know there's a lot of potential in that place and it's sad to see sometimes this is you know r real life and hands down one of the best answers I I ever got you know <laughs> uh, after one of my questions so thank you for for sharing that experience yeah, yeah. and and thank you for asking that because that's something I was really passionate about and I, I really am still passionate about is just uh 
just one like like Denver Denver struggling a little bit right now or at least uh, Colorado in general but Denver specifically is just struggling with gang violence and just you know like uh, all that stuff and it's just like I don't know man if you can make a difference at all it would be it'd be ideal and it's like in that juvie man I know I know I had a lot of real conversations with some of those kids and uh, a lot of it's just joking around and stuff but I know with at least everybody in my unit I probably had like one real conversation with every single one of them at a time and, and some of them, uh, uh, we were a lot closer and we had a lot uh, better rapport. So I, I could have a lot more like serious conversations. I knew a lot about their family life. I knew about their history. I knew about, about why they, why they were there and what, what led up to why they were there and all that stuff. But it's just like, I don't know, man, as Denver, if we can invest in our youth better and if we can change a little bit of things, man, I think it would take us a long way. Hopefully you had a positive impact on some of those uh, young young men uh, <laughs> and i'm sure you know the ones who have you positively impacted are, are still following you and uh, you know i i mean it, it, it's it's tough i i i understand i understand it yeah, yeah i try to keep tabs on a, on a handful of them for sure uh it's actually technically like if i was still working for the state i wouldn't be allowed to talk to them until they're like past a certain age but since i don't work there anymore I, i'm like very much like in communication with a handful of them, checking up on them and making sure that they're doing okay. And then, you know, I've, I've been provided a few opportunities outside of uh, the actual workforce just to work with some kids, uh, just kids out that are like potentially at risk, you know, and uh, hopefully I can make any impact on that. But uh, I definitely need to start winning some fights and make more of a name for myself so I can, you know, have some notoriety and make them want to listen to me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's hard to gain your attention when nobody really knows who you are. I mean, I guess a, a few people know already your name and who you are, but I totally understand your position. And of course, the more you win, the more chances you, you have, you know, to reach a wider audience. Um, Lisa, I, I, I would totally like to talk all, uh, you know, all the time about that, but we have to switch back to, to MMA. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I could go on a tangent with that too, but yeah, sorry about that. No, 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 you don't have to apologize, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I have to move on. Um, I would like to, to ask about a prediction for your next fight. Uh, I predict chaos. I predict a uh, fight of the night. I predict maybe a fight night bonus for myself and then, you know, uh, a fan bonus too. So I predict it all, man. I, I want to finish and I want to go out there and impress everybody, man. I want everybody to realize that. I'm, I'm a number one contender and uh, I deserve that shot at the title. And I know that I'm probably not going to get it off a win off match now, but I know that I can, it's not going to put me further away off beating match now, you know? The card on which you're fighting is headlined by the fight between Charles Oliveira and Justin Gagey, you know, the lightweight championship uh, clash. Uh, may I ask your pick for that fight? Yeah, yeah. Justin Gaethje is a Colorado, a Colorado dude. I always go for Justin Gaethje every chance I get. So Colorado. And then Ro, if you're asking for Rose Namajunas too, she's from Colorado also. And I always root for the Colorado hometown people. I, I don't run into Rose as much as I run into Gaethje. I see Gaethje a lot at small shows and stuff. But uh, yeah, man, I always root for them. And uh, I hope that they succeed because uh, they, they come from Team Elevation. And, uh, and uh, I forget Trevor Whitman's gym. So it's like, they're like pretty much neighbors to us. And it's like, I don't ever think of a uh, team elevation as like a rivalry or anything. It's just, you know, we always push each other to be better. It's like a lot of our fighters match up against each other while they're coming up. And it's just, it's cool to see some of those guys. Like I watched Corey Sandhagen fight as an amateur, like his whole entire career, you know, it's so cool to watch his success and it's inspiring and all the above, you know? So it, it's been amazing. I watched, uh, I fought on the same card as uh, Justin Gaethje when I was younger and, uh, that was inspiring too. I mean, he fought one of my teammates, which wasn't, but it's just like, it's cool to just see how far we both got and all that. So. Yeah, for, for real, for sure. Um, have you already picked your walkout song? Yeah. Yeah. It's my, it's going to be my, I've been dreaming of this walkout song and this walkout forever, but it's shimmy, shimmy ya by ODB. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's always my walkout song for the UFC. So I'm going to try to make it my, uh, my permanent song. Uh, what do you like about that song? particular oh baby i like it raw <laughs> that's what i like about it shimmy, shimmy. and then also it's just like a fun song it's just a fun song and uh i don't know like uh, sometimes i like walking out to me and stuff and like stuff that pumps me up but like that song calms me down a little bit and then it makes me laugh a little bit and uh you know it's it's still it's still a good song and uh i, I don't know it's one of those that mentions my nickname a bunch of times but it's also just like i don't know it calms me down and it puts me in a good mood to go out there and uh set the scene and also i think the crowd's gonna love it too i hope they do but uh you know who knows 
I guess they, they will. Uh, Brandon, thank you very much for your time today. And thank you again for your answers. Before I let you go, do you have any last message that you would like Please. to share with us? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, EAP Glass. Thank you guys for uh, your support. And uh, hope that I go out there and make a statement, show you guys that I'm the I'm the real champion of this division. I'm the best in the flyweight division. And uh, I'm going to go out there and prove it on uh, May 7th. Best of luck with your upcoming fight. Hopefully, I'll hear again from you in the future. All right. Thank you, brother. Have a good day. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.